Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial and in this one we're going to be creating this simple scroll animation from this dribble design and we're going to be using the illustrations provided by Sam G on dribble so you have lots of illustrations here and we'll be using some of this in our project plus I got the idea for this tutorial from Catalan Mirion on YouTube so he created this with react native but we'll be creating it using flutter so let's get started Inside Visual Studio Code, I've created a simple stateful widget which we're going to be using for this animation and I've gone ahead to add some of the illustrations from Dribble. To create this effect, we're going to be using the page view widget provided by Flutter and we'll also be putting this in a stack so we'd have the background image and the individual page view items. So I'll update my code to the following. In here, we created a stack widget and set its alignment to the center. This pushes the children and all its items to be aligned from the center. Next, we return the fractionally sized box as the first child of the stack widget, and then we set its height factor to 0.55. This makes this widget take 55% of the bounds provided by its parent widget. After that, we set the child of this fractionally sized box to a page view builder. Then we return the container from its item builder and this is going to contain the images provided by the data variable. So we can scroll through individual images. Now that we've got this working, we need to make this container look like the design from Dribble. Let's go ahead and update our code to the following. To give it the required spacing from the left and the right sides, I wrap the container with a fractionally sized box and give it a width factor of 0.8. This makes this widget take 80% of the horizontal space. Now you might be wondering why I added this margin over here. Well, I simply added it so that the box shadow we are giving this container is going to be visible. If you just set a box shadow without adding this margin, the box shadow would be cut off. And I know currently you can't see the box shadow, but as soon as we add the background image, you'll be able to see that. So let's do that now. Let's go ahead and add the background image. Over here, I simply added the container as the background image and then I set its decoration to be a decoration image just like we did for this widget over here. Currently, I set the image to be the first item from the data list. Then, I returned a backdrop filter as a child of the container. The backdrop filter is used to add effects to an image. For this, I set the filter to be an image filter that blur, and then I set both the sigma x and sigma y to be 15. And this property handles the extent of the blur. So 15 shows that this is a very high blur. Then I pass the child of the backdrop filter to be a container. And I give it a black color with an opacity of 0.2. Giving it a color is very important. If you comment this out, the effect will be gone. So this child is simply kind of like a layover effect over the image which gives the blur effect. So if we slide through the image or the page view rather, you can see that the background image is not being updated. So we need a way to be able to update this background image based on the selected page of the page view. And to achieve this, we would create a variable that's going to be holding the current page of the page view. Let's do that now. And I just found out that we need to add this item count for the page view builder 
cool. So now that we've set, so now that we've created this variable called current page, we need a way for the page view builder to update this variable. For that, we'll be using the on page change property or on page change callback function of the page view builder. So on page change, we'll set the current page to be equals to the page variable provided by the page view builder. Cool. So now we'll be using this current page inside this container. So we'll be replacing the index zero with this current page variable. Save your work and let's see if that works. Cool. It works. Now we didn't add animation, kind of like a fade animation. So that's whenever we switch the item of a page view item, we should have a fade effect. For this, I'll be using an implicit animated widget called the animated switcher. Update your code to the following. And let's try it out. Oops. The background image updates but without an animation. And why is this so? The reason is simple. Whenever you use an animated switcher and you pass in a child that contains the same widget all the time, Flutter sees this as the same widget, so it doesn't render a new animation. So we need a way to be able to tell Flutter that whenever we switch between a page view item, the background widget should be a different one. And for this, we'll be using the keys. So keys are simply used to uniquely identify widgets in Flutter. Let's go ahead and add a key to the child widget, which is the container. Over here, I added a value key of type string. A value key can accept different data types, but in this our case, we'd we'll be using a string. Then, I passed in the URL of the current selected image. Note, this value would always change whenever we slide through the page view. And once this key changes, Flutter sees the container widget as a different widget in the widget tree, which in turn creates the desired effect for our animated switcher. Let's go ahead and try it out. Cool, our animation works and we have the desired scroll animation effect. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe for more contents like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.